All right, bit of a video on ESCs. So, as you probably know by now, BL Heli 32 is no more, at least as far as we know, it's no more. So no more upgrades, no more installs, no more BL Heli 32 on new ESCs. So what I want to do is build a copter with AM32 ESCs. So AM32 is the open source sort of competitor to BL Holy 32. And Holy Bros kindly sent me another of these kits. So this is the QAV250 that they sell with sort of a, um, uh, it's a kind of a development platform, but uh, it's, it's sort of nice because it's, uh, it's also a small quad so you can crash it easily enough. So I built this one, built this one in an hour. You may have seen that video. It's got a Pixhawk 6C on it. Uh, anyway, they sent me another because you can see the SCs here. So these are Beale Heli S, and I flashed these with Blue J, but that's no good for trying out um, uh, AM32. And interestingly, the new motors, new motors, so these are called so V2207 um, Velox. Uh, now these are actually T motor ESC, uh, T motor motors. So they're actually quite good, um, quite good quality. So if I compare with my beta here, you can see they look very similar. Got the hollow aluminium. Um, shaft here uh, the bottom's cut out for a bit of lightweight the mounting I mean they're purple okay or pink so that's different but they're very very similar to, to these um, similar I mean basically the same height so that's cool um, and the other th nice thing about these is these are 6s motors which is really very cool so um, I think a rebuild of a QAV250 could could have some beans, so I think uh, I think we're going to try that. But these are pretty pretty low power ESCs. I don't know what they're rated at. I don't think it even says that they're you know they're small ESCs. They're not going to take a lot of current. So what I'm going to replace these with are some Teco 32. 45 amp ESC, so I've got four of these, and so I should be able to draw 180 amps total through these constant, um, probably a bit more burst. And so I'm going to use these and replace these Bill LES ESCs with these Tekka 30. You can see they're a little bit bigger because um, of the current draw. But uh, I think they'll I think they'll fit okay. You can see the sort of about the same width as the arm there, so I think they'll fit okay there. So and um, what I'm going to do is flash these with AM32, and I'll I'll take you through that procedure because I, th I think it's a little bit complicated. Um, but before I flash them, I have to mount them so that you solder them up so I can actually get in contact with them. I, th I think I'm going to have to uh, connect a debugger and I've got some probe pins on order that uh, the RG Pilot P Foundation has kindly paid for that allow me to connect this up easily but I do need to be able to wire it into this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder these take these off and I'm going to solder some female bullet connector here that I've got and they fit the motor okay there so that's the right size bullet connector so I seem to have a few of those so I'm going to solder those into here uh, and then solder the wires on the other end and then I will be ready to go to actually flash with M32 Good stuff All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pile of solder on each of these connectors and some on the end of the bullet connector 
and then I'm gonna offer these up and uh, solder them in. So get a bit of solder here. Now these are Let's see how well these work, so a bit of solder on here. these is they're very heat conductive so if I hold these with um, pliers straight off they will absorb all the heat so what I really need to do is hold these through something non-conductive ideally this kind of silicon mat um, but uh, the other thing I can do is use uh, my little rubber thing here. If I just mount this in here. I think I should be able to so got this guy here. Should be able to hold that in the end there. I think that's good. Put some solder on. Offer it up. I think you can see that okay, so let's put a little bit of solder on here. Alright, that's full of solder. Let's pop this one on, see whether it solders up okay. Make it straight. Seems to work quite well. Motor plugs in. Yep, and that's good. All right, seems like a plan, so I will do the others of these and pause the video while I do that. All right, there we go. All soldered up. can see the joints are quite clean, not quite as level, but uh, these are the FETs, so these are the bits that are going to get warm, so I want the FETs uppermost, so I get the cooling, and so I've got these just slightly tilted up. I'd like to say it was um, deliberate, but I just made sure they were tilted this way rather than that way. So uh, those are all the um, bullet connectors. I will put some heat shrink on a little bit. Um, actually, maybe I don't even need to uh, put the heat shrink over. So what I'm going to do is cut open these so that I can desolder the wires. So get some scissors uh, here. See what's under here. Here are some ESCs. Might as well pull the whole thing off just so you can see it. So, um, as you can see, much smaller FETs. Probably won't take an awful lot of current that. To burn out relatively easily. So I'm going to desolder all of these, solder them onto here. Um, these actually have telemetry, but I don't really care about that because I'm going to use BD shot on these, so that should be fine. So I will D 
desolve these wires. Let's just uh, give that a go while you're watching. All right, so got there's the plus. Of course, they use solder without lead in, so it takes quite a lot more to melt it, but it will go eventually. There's the minus. Ground is going to be even harder, really hard. Myself needs so much heat. I might have to turn up the soldering iron a bit. There we go. Oh, and these <laughs> these came off just with the heat anyway. Um, so what I'll do is I'll tin the ends of these with leaded solder, trusty leaded solder, because that will be much easier. And then I can solder these back on. So it looks good. I shall give that a go. All right, those are all, well, the power's on. Um, I'm gonna solder the signal wires a little bit later when I've changed the tip, because it's a bit fat, that tip. Um, so the only remaining thing to do is figure out what I'm gonna do about the capacitors. So I could put a capacitor on each ESC I suppose it'll work reasonably well. Quite, quite big though. Um, I suppose it'll work. My options are put it, put one on each ESC, or just put a big fat one on the power line. I'm kind of tempted to put a big fat one on the power line. Might be a little bit easier. A little bit of space there because these are a bit fiddly I mean it's better to have the capacitance near as near the ESC as possible um, so it depends how how uh, energetic I'm feeling because there's quite a lot of soldering four more capacitors versus one big fat one there um, we shall see one or the other, it does need a capacitor though, otherwise you get um, current surges, which uh, is a good way of, yeah, well, mainly current surges from the ESC to flight control, and you don't really want that one happening. So I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do there, use this tip to solder it on, and then change the tip and do the signal wires. And I think I'm done, which looks good. All right, and there we are done. So I elected to put a Monster 1000 microfarad capacitor, 35 volts here. These are 35 volts, 330 microfarad, so 1000 is close to what the, the same as four of them would be. I've put the signal wires on. Um, I'm not gonna put heat shrink on this yet because I need to have access to these pads in order to flash the M32 bootloader but uh, everything else looks good and I will plug in some motors power it up check that um, they power okay and that I can uh, uh, see the BL heli firmware on here before I make any further progress you can see you've got a little um, this is the minimum OSD, which they're still using. Amazing, really. Uh, most m modern flight controllers include the OSD on the flight controller, but of course that's not true of um, sort of the, the more enterprise class ones. So and this runs with a Pixhawk 6C Mini, which doesn't have OSD. So uh, yeah, good um, good upgrade. Ready for some AM32 flashing. Thanks for watching.